In Pakistan, the Ahmadiyya sect of Islam is considered heretical, and members of that community face torture and abuse. To escape persecution, Sadia Rafiqadine and her parents fled their home in 1990 and sought asylum in Canada. My parents coming here knew that they were going to face challenges for sure, but I don't think they anticipated how hard life would really be here. And one of the main things they saw right from the beginning was that the English language was critical to survival in Canada and they didn't know it as fluently as they should have to pretty much survive here. Speaking English wasn't their biggest challenge. Having enough money to make ends meet was. It was a constant struggle, and after Sadia's brother and sister were born, her father had a serious accident, and their financial situation got worse. Sadia became like a second parent to her siblings, sharing housekeeping and cooking responsibilities with her mother. At school, she took on an intensive course load and worked two part-time jobs to help support her family. Amazingly, Sadia still found time to volunteer and get involved in extracurricular activities. High school, I did a lot, a lot of things, and I, I did them because I was so interested in them and I wanted to make a difference somehow, and I knew my limitations. I couldn't go to Africa, but I knew I could do something uh, sitting you know, here in Canada and a world away, but something that could help someone else. And I knew I wasn't able to go back to Pakistan, but at least I could do advocacy work in an area that I was interested in. So I focused my energies towards those. She was president of the school's Amnesty International chapter for three years, editor of the school newspaper, senior editor of the yearbook, and she led a fundraising drive that raised $10,000 to build a school in Sierra Leone. After graduating with numerous awards and top honors, Sadia enrolled in Trinity College at U of T as a joint specialist student in international relations and peace and conflict studies, where she earned the prestigious William Heaslip Scholarship. Immediately, I got involved with the International Relations Society, the G8 Research Group, Amnesty International, amongst other groups. I love Amnesty's work with human rights and one of the things that we focused on was honor killings of women in Pakistan and it's definitely something that I want to work to eliminate and it's a con I mean it's my country it's where I come from where I was born so I feel a connection to helping women who are similar to me in many areas in many ways but also very different in 2006 Sadia attended the G8 summit in St Petersburg Russia as a journalist the G8 research group was one of my favorite activities because it allowed me to pursue research work into the G8 and what they, the promises that they make at the summit and hold them accountable for actually following through or not and writing reports about this which are published and distributed to media and other sources worldwide. This past year, Sadia realized her dream of traveling to Africa when she was selected to attend the 2006 World University Service of Canada's International Seminar in Botswana. That was about two months, uh, an incredible experience. I worked at SOS Children's Orphanage in the Tlokling village of Khabrone in the main capital of Botswana and just saw children suffering from HIV AIDS and parents who were going through extremely traumatic experiences themselves. For somebody in, in their first or second year of university, her resume looks uh, like somebody who's in graduate school or, or even seeking a job as a professor. It's extremely uh, developed, very extensive. And most of that is community involvement. It's uh, being uh, with the International Relations Society. It's taking charge of student groups. And, you know, that speaks volumes about uh, Sadia's own personal inclinations, I think, towards, you know, sharing and, and really thriving in an academic environment. She's committed to promoting peace, tolerance, and justice. Confident, courageous, and extremely intelligent, Sadia Rafikadin is a true leader.
I, I expect to be Saudi's Secretary of uh, External Affairs when she's Prime Minister of the country. That's what I'm angling for. So uh, I think Saudia can do whatever she wants to do. And, and I know that sounds, you know, somewhat corny, I suppose, but it, it's absolutely true in this case. And, you know, having a, an unbridled enthusiasm and support for one student doesn't come naturally to most professors. Uh, in Saudia's case, it wouldn't surprise me if she ends up, you know, being UN Secretary General, Prime Minister of the country. She could do pretty much anything she wants um, because she has basically got it all, to be totally honest with you. So my secret agenda is to ride her coattails as long as I possibly can. So. Despite all my obstacles, I had so many opportunities here that one can only find in a country like Canada. And these are things that I would think of every day when I'm going out the door and being able to walk down the street and just you know, freedoms and opportunity that I might not have been given while in Pakistan.